put you in front In front of my melody You are all that matters You are all that matters I'll make room for Hallelujah Today is the first Sunday In the month of September So we have begun the ember months Praise God a lot of money moves in the ember months. My prayer is that some of those money will move to your direction. Yeah. And to my direction also. Yeah. <laughs> amen and amen and amen. We've been having a wonderful service today. Amen. Everything that has happened today bless my soul. Glory be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, today, I want to preach a message titled, Goodness. What's the title of this message? You know, we say, well, this is our month of deliverance. Uh, goodness care. You know, I thought we were talking about demons and devil and witches and binding and losing. It's good to do all that, but not today. <laughs> I want to share with you something that can disarm even those demons and, and witches and wizards. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So the title of this message is goodness. Everybody say goodness. It is good to be good. Goodness is loving others as God loves you. Goodness is the ability to do that which is good. The ability to do what God wants you to do. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus. Hallelujah. And he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Jesus is our master. Whatever he did, we ought to do. God gave him power and he used the power to do good. As part of the goodness, he went about healing the sick and raising the dead. Power doesn't just come on people for nothing. It comes for service. Many of us here have been empowered in one way or the other. Your talent can be the power that God has given you. Your ability to talk. It's not everybody who can talk fluently. It's power God has given you. The ability to argue and win an argument is an ability God has given you. We all have been blessed. Say, I am blessed. Hey, come on, declare yourself blessed this morning. Hey, come on, declare yourself blessed this morning. I am blessed, brother. I am blessed. Hallelujah. I am not a complainant. I am blessed. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Every day of my life, I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning, when I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. I am blessed. Can sing, sing along with me. I am blessed. I am blessed every day. Every day of my life, I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning, when I live. to be good to people. Whatever God has given you is for you to bless mankind. Hallelujah. I tell you two short stories. Well, they are long, but I've compressed them. Amen. About goodness. 
the goodness of man. This boy was an orphan. He was in school, but he couldn't pay his school fees. So he talked with a friend of his, and they came up with a, a strategy to raise money. And the strategy was to organize a musical concert. And so they approached a musician, and the man said, okay, no problem, through his manager. The manager said, we need $2,000 to do this project for you. And they all agreed, and so they began to sell tickets, sell tickets. As, at the day of the concert, they had only made $1,600. And so they went to the man and said, we're sorry, we can't get all the money in, but we're willing to give you $1,600 with a post-direct check for $400. And the man said, no, I won't do that. I won't take the money. I will not take the post. In fact, he took the positive check and tore it and returned their cash. He said, I will do it for you. Praise God. And so they organized the concert. Years later, during the Second World War, Poland was heavily devastated. Hunger came to Poland. People were dying of hunger. The president didn't know what to do other than to apply, wrote a letter to America and said, please deliver or send us food. Immediately America got that letter, they loaded ships and sent food to Poland. And the people were saved from hunger. Then the president decided to go and say thank you to the man in charge of food and relief materials in America who responded to his letter so quickly. Then he got there and said, hey, thank you very much. We are so grateful. I represent my country. I'm the president of the nation. I just want to say thank you for all you have done. Then the young man said, you remember two young boys that approached you for a concert so, so, so time ago, so many years ago? You know, say, yes, I am that boy. Hallelujah. You wonder why the quick response he was that boy. I tell you another story. A young boy was very, very hungry. He was walking around the streets. Then he decided to turn to a house and knock the door. And a lady opened the door. And the young boy said, well, he was hungry, but he didn't know how to say, I am hungry, give me food. And I said, uh, please, ma'am, can you give me water to drink? So the woman went in and came out with a glass of milk and gave to the boy. And the boy drank the whole thing and asked the woman, how much is it? <laughs> the woman said, no, my mother taught me not to charge for things like this. And that was the end. The boy left. They never saw again. Years later, that woman fell sick and needed a specialist hospital. So they had to take her to another city. Because that's where her case can be treated. So they admitted her. And a doctor was called and said, hey, we have a patient from Soso City. And that interested him because that's the city he came from. Oh, who could that be from that, my old town? You know? Only to get there and found that that was the woman that gave him milk several years ago. That young boy had become a specialist doctor. So he treated this woman, the woman became well, but her problem now was the bill. The bill is $28,000. How will she pay this money? No insurance, no nothing. Ah! While she was still pondering on that, they brought the bill to her. And then at the bottom of the bill was written, your bill has been paid with a cup of milk. Give God all the glory. Hallelujah. See, you don't know tomorrow. You don't know who you may help today, who may in turn help you tomorrow. You don't know. You, you may be well now. You are doing very fine. That's okay. Glory be to God for that. But you don't know tomorrow. I shared a story some time ago. I'm, I'm being persuaded to share it again because of tomorrow. This man... The other two examples were America. This next example is Nigeria. Ikeja, Jaro here. Very, very well. They had chains of businesses, but very wicked. Very wicked. Then he married a third wife. 
you know, he has money so he can marry wives. <laughs> marry the third wife who gave him pepper. The third wife did not have any issue and then she began to foment trouble and said, it's the two other two women who are preventing her from having a child. The problem was so much, she was demanding that the man should drive away the first two wives. Well, to cut the long story short, the man decided to settle everybody. He called all his children, gave them money, gave them houses. The three women, he gave them plenty of money. And the funny thing was that they all left. Both the wives and the children, all of them disappeared. They left him. A time came, this man became ill and nobody knew. Nobody to take care of him. All of a sudden, his lawyer decided to pay him a visit and met him in a pool of feces, igbe, shit, maggots everywhere. His gardener's daughter was the one who now buys him food from the street. And this man was a terrible millionaire. He's now eating from the street. Whatever that girl is able to buy for him is what he eats. That was the condition the lawyer met him in. The lawyer decided to invite doctors and nurses. They came. They carried him up. They bathed him. They clothed him. They fumigated his room. Praise God. If he was not good to that lawyer, will he even see the lawyer again? Answer me now. No. Is it, many of us are pursuing money. It's okay, but the truth is that pursue God. Money is not worth really pursuing. Pursue God, pursue relationship. I've lived enough to see people have money, and yet their money, at a time came, their money could not help them anymore. It was only human beings that could help them. Praise God. And that's what the Bible tells us in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 27. It said, pure and genuine religion is pure and undefiled. Another version said, genuine. Religion before God and the Father is to visit orphans and widows in their trouble. That is pure religion. To visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep yourself unspotted from this world. Amen. In John chapter 12, is a story of a woman. The Bible tells us she took this expensive ointment to Jesus, broke the container, and used the oil to wipe the feet of Jesus and used her hair to clean the feet of Jesus. And we're told that it was an expensive perfume. And we're told also that it was worth a day's job, wages. And of course, some people were there who were saying, oh, come on, why is, what a waste. What a waste. This, this, this perfume could have been sold and the money given to the poor. <laughs> Jesus said, you see, the poor you always have with you. But what she has done, she has prepared me for my burial. Praise God. You know, when we give things to the less privileged, we look for what is no more useful to us. Is that not so? We look for clothes that we have worn and worn and worn, and iron has dealt with it seriously. Is that not so? We give people what does not cost us anything. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> our giving calls for sacrifice. When you give, give it sacrificially. Amen. Our giving requires sacrifice of time and sometimes of money. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's good to be good. Can you help me tell somebody it's good to be good? But no matter how good you are, your goodness can, your, cannot purchase you salvation. I hope we know that. Our goodness cannot deliver us from hell. But we, can, we are born again, we are delivered to be good. The evidence 
of our being born again is goodness. Amen. Don't say I'm born again, I'm a Christian, and yet you are not good to your neighbors, you are not good to anybody. Because goodness is the evidence that you are born again. Good works are evidence of a new life. Ephesians 2.10 The Bible says that we are created for good works. Amen. If you want to grow in Christ, work for Christ. You will not find fulfillment in serving yourself. You only find fulfillment in serving other people. It's not enough to just come to church and sing and dance and go home. No, have you been useful to anybody? Nature, nothing in nature lives for itself. I wrote this out from a book. It said, nothing in nature lives for itself. The sun gives heat. Is it for the sun's enjoyment? What is the heat for? It's for us. Hallelujah. Rivers have water. Is it for them to drink? But for who? For others. Flowers, they, they sent out their scents. Is it for their purpose, for their enjoyment? For who? Trees bear fruits. Do they eat their fruits? No. Who eats their fruits? You and me. So nothing in nature exists for itself. So let's not see life as, oh, it's just me and myself. The man for that says, a healthy trees bears healthy fruits. The diseased tree bears diseased fruits or no fruit at all. Heaven will count you well if you are bearing fruits. But seek if you are not bearing fruit. Say, I am well. So bear fruit in Jesus' name. True goodness comes from the heart. You do it from the heart. You don't even do it for what you will gain. You do it for God. And he is the rewarder. He will reward you. Hallelujah. Goodness includes even rebuking in love. <laughs> Correcting. Chastisement if needed. I didn't say you should go about rebuking everybody. This is where goodness is greater than kindness. Kindness does not involve correcting. Your friend is doing 419 and you know it. And you have never told him that this thing you are doing will lead you to jail. You never told him. But you know you are not being good to him. You are not being good to him. There are times we have to tell people the truth so that they can be delivered. They see you putting your hand in fire. They say, well, when he burns him, he will learn his lesson. No, no, no. Tell him, your oh, brother, this thing you are doing will burn you. You don't need to go through the experience to learn the lesson. But if that's what you want, it's okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. When people correct you, accept correction. If anybody tries to correct you, it's because he loves you. It's because he wants something better for you. Because there are others who will see you doing the same thing and they will, say, they will pretend as if they are not seeing you. Of course, people can misread you, read you. Maybe they didn't really see what they thought they saw. And then they come correcting you, then you will now correct them. Because they are doing it out of a genuine heart. It's to help you. Amen, 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 amen. Jesus was always reaching out, looking for the best in people. Don't look for the faults. Look for the best. Don't focus on people's faults. 
Focus on their strengths. Focus on what the person can become. Praise God forevermore. We too, like Jesus, can reach out to people. You know, when I talked about loneliness some time ago, I mentioned particularly elderly people. There are many elderly people who have lost all their friends to death, but they are still alive, and they are very lonely because nobody to relate with, nobody to talk to. And very often we ignore them. Elderly people. We need to reach out to them, those who are around us. They don't have to come from your tribe. Reach out to them. Hallelujah. The day I watched a television program in England and saw this woman, 80 something years old, she said sometimes she will sit by her door, her own door, looking for who will come in and drink tea with her. She's looking for somewhere to relate with, nobody. And there are such people in Nigeria also. There are people who can put smiles on their faces. There are people who are languishing in the prisons. It could be as a result of their fault, and it may not be. But the issue is that they are in the prison. And they are going through all kinds of emotional and physical pains. What can we do? What can you do? What can I do to help one person? Hallelujah. We can visit the sick in the hospitals. We can visit the sick amongst us. Let's not live a, a selfish life. A life of I, me, and myself. The trinity of self. Reach out. Share what you have. In sharing you gain. Give to the less privileged. Comfort those who are grieving, who have lost loved ones. Pray one for another. Let me be honest with you. My prayer for you that is listening to me is that you keep moving from one degree of glory to another. Amen. But do you realize that in life sometimes people have temporal setbacks? One Mrs. Dr. Awa told me a story of a man who was so rich, she was, he was an importer, was importing goods from abroad. I don't know whether it's America or China. Well, it was not the days of China, nevertheless. And the ship sank. All his goods were gone. This man became a bar attendant. That will not be your experience in Jesus' name. Amen. But sometimes some of these things happen. Let's not deceive ourselves. I was told a story of a man. He used to live in Ikoi. Was exporting cocoa from Nigeria to England. He lived in Ikoi. In one of the shipments, pirates hijacked the ship and took it away. This man packed his load from Ekoyi and began to live in Alagbado. <laughs> Again, that will not be your experience. But it happens. And when such things happen, the whole world may not rise up to help you. But there might be one person. There might be one person that you have helped before who will rise up and say, no, no, it cannot be like this. As we conclude, let's read a few scriptures. Amen. The first one is Proverbs 21, 13. Whoever shuts his ears to the cry of the poor will also cry himself and not be heard. Is that in your Bible? Whoever closes his ears to the cry of the poor will cry someday. And nobody will hear him. All right, let's take another scriptures. This one again is Proverbs 19, 
17. He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord, and he will pay back what he has given. Who will pay back? I say, who will pay back? It's God who will pay back. And that is why you are not looking for thank you if you don't find any. There are people, no matter what you do for them, they may never say thank you. You did it for God. And be content with that. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are people you are ignoring now that you should not be ignoring. There are people God has strategically arranged for you to help. But you are looking the other way. You are doing as if you are not seeing them. There are times we entertain angels. So do not forget to entertain. Because by so doing, you might find yourself entertaining angels. Angels don't always come in nice three-piece suit. They may come in a poor man's dress. They may come tattered. They may come dirty. May God lay somebody in your heart to help this year. Ah, this year man could have been better. Oh. He said, I don't have enough. Why should I help people? Ah, you help people so that you can have enough. That's how it works. You help people so that God can help you. The seed you sow is the seed you reap. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Be a helper of somebody. If not for helpers, I won't be where I am today. Many of you seated here, you are my helpers. You pray for me. Is that not so? If you have not been praying for me, better start praying for me. <laughs> Amen. You are my helper and I am your helper. This message I'm preaching is to what extent? To help you. It's not everything that is deliverance. Oh. This one I'm preaching is deliverance. Oh. I hope you know it. It's major deliverance. May you receive deliverance. Yeah. May you receive healing. Yeah. May you receive health. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the day of your trouble, may you receive help from on high. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It is good to be good. It is good to be good. May you be good yeah. in the name of Jesus. May you not forget the things God wants you to do. One of my big regrets was an elderly woman. She used to come to this church. And one day I was just, I hardly go on work, but on this road, I hardly do. But I saw her selling tomatoes there. And I said oh, to myself, oh. Oh, so this is what this woman does. I will come back here and give her money. And I forgot. By the time I got back there again, she was no longer there. She was gone. And I never saw her in church again. It was my regret for months, if not years, that I did not do what I should have done. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't do it at the right time, the time will pass. The opportunity will pass. In fact, the opportunity will be given to somebody else because you refuse to do what you should do. I pray we will all, me and you, always act promptly when we hear the voice of God. When you hear God saying, this is what you should do. Don't debate. Don't argue. Don't even negotiate. Do what God wants you to do. The miracle may not come immediately. But I assure you, it will certainly come someday. It will come when you least expect it. It will come when you need it the most. It will come.
Be good to people. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. My joy is seeing people who were nothing becoming somebody in life. That is my joy. And that should be your joy also. Don't condemn anyone. You never can say what this person can become in life. You never can say. You might be sitting next to the next president of Nigeria. You don't know. You don't know. You might be sitting next to the next billionaire in town. You don't know. You can't say. God does not work with your timetable. He won't consult you to bless anybody. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. One day, I'll close with this. A young lady came to my office for counseling. She's from a big family, so many children. And by the time she told me all her troubles, and I said, why don't you go and study, do some studies on computer, you know, computer literacy? He said to me, there's no money. There's no money. My father has about 11 of us or 12. There's no money. I was meeting this girl for the first time. But what endeared me to her was that she came with a handbill of a church where I had preached. I said, you came to our church, and this was a, this was a handbill. You, you preached. I said, okay. And I called one of my elders then, who was running a school for computer science kind of school. And I said, I have a candidate for you. I want you to admit this young lady, and I will pay the fees. He said, send her. So I sent her, and then he called me back and said, Papa, you don't need to pay. I will take care of that. Okay, that, glory be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, well, the, the girl was coming from a very, very suffering background. You understand what I mean by very, very suffering background. So she worked very hard and learned the thing fast. Before you knew it, she became a staff there. And she brought her first salary to me. I thought it was for me to just bless it. She said, no, it's for you. I said, how would you live if I chop all your first salary? He said, well, that's what I'm convinced I should do. This my first salary is yours. I didn't sow a cobble, and yet I raised, I, I, <laughs> I ripped Naira and cobble. But I sowed kindness. I sowed goodness. In one of the services, she brought her father, her mother, and many of their children. All of them came to church. Why? One act of goodness. Do you know why some people will not follow you to church? You've not been nice to them. If anything, you've been a quarreling somebody. You've not shown them who a Christian ought to be. They have not seen the love of God in you. So you say, eh, our church is the best. You say, ah, with this product I'm seeing, how can your church be the best? The product is bad. So can the church be good? <laughs> eh? There shall be showers of blessings. This is the promise of God. There shall be seasons of pressing. Come from the forever 